What happens if I've sinned? Can I come back to God? Hey everybody, welcome to The Whole Truth where I am taking you through the entire Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation without skipping anything. So if that content sounds good to you and you want to follow along on this journey as we go a little further into the Bible every day, then reach down, hit the little subscribe button or the follow button or the like button, whatever. Reach down, hit those little buttons below and that way as new uh, content is coming out, you'll be able to watch as each one comes out. And if you want to catch up, you can go over to thewholetruthbiblestudy.com and there all of the videos are placed in one convenient location. Why do I say one convenient location? Because if you've ever tried to find a video on Facebook, you know just how annoying that can be. But if you go over to the whole truth Bible study.com, you'll see Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and now Deuteronomy. And they're all in one convenient location. They're all playing from YouTube, but you'll be able to see them all laid out really nicely. Plus there's some other cool things over there. That's not the important thing though. The most important thing is that you go grab your Bibles because right now is today. Let's not worry about what we're going to do in the future. Let's worry about right now today. And today we're reading Numbers chapter 4 and we're picking up in verse 25. Moses just told the people to be forewarned not to make a carved image. And now he gives them the warning of what happens if they do make a carved image. And then he tells them what to do if they've done that. Okay. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 25. Five. I think there's a lot of practical application here. Read it along with me. When you beget children and grandchildren and have grown old in the land and act corruptly and make carved images in the form of anything and do evil in the sight of the Lord, your God, to provoke him to anger, I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that you will soon utterly perish from the land which you cross over the Jordan to possess. You will not prolong your days in it, but will be utterly destroyed and the Lord will scatter you among the peoples. And you will be left few in number among the nations where the Lord will drive you. And there you will serve gods and work and the, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. But from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. When you are in distress and all these things come upon you in the latter days, when you turn to the Lord your God and obey his voice, for the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not forsake you nor destroy you nor forget the covenant of your fathers, which he has sworn to them." The, the passage starts so harsh and then just flips and ends so beautifully. The harsh part is this. Moses basically prophesies and says, when you grow old, you're going to do this. You're going to make carved images. I told you, we saw this in the last video, but it's the, just what Moses had just said to them. He said, don't make any carved images. And he says, when you grow old and you have children and grandchildren and you do this and you make carved images, he just says it like it's this matter of fact thing. And when you do this, here's what you need to know. He says, I, I call on heaven and earth to tell testified this day. So he's basically saying like, I'm making you a promise. This is exactly what this is going to look like. You want the prediction? Here's the prediction. You start worshiping false gods and you are going to provoke the Lord to anger and you are going to be destroyed. The land that you go in today to possess, you're going to lose it. You're going to lose that land. You're going to lose every bit of that. And instead you're going to be forced. You're going to be driven out just like God's driving out the Canaanite people. He will drive you out and you will be forced to serve other gods. Gods. Now think about that. You make a carved image and you begin to worship and it's almost like God says, you want to worship other gods? Fine. And he's going to send you to a land where they serve other gods. And he says that you're going to have to worship a God who doesn't smell or see or know anything. You're going to worship a God that's made out of wood. And can you imagine like you have just been this people that have wandered through the wilderness. God has spoken to you in the fire. He has spoken on the mountain that was on fire. That's what he's talking about in Horeb. That's what Moses has been talking about. But they also have things like the Ten Commandments that have been given. I mean, it has been an amazing journey that Israel has been on as God parted the Red Sea. He brought manna from heaven. He brought water from the rock. They were being bitten by snakes. A snake was a serpent, a brazen serpent was lifted up. And if they looked on the serpent, they would live. Oh my goodness. The things that have happened, the miracles that have happened over the course of the past 40 years, who is like our God? Don't make any carved images.
images of him. But if you do and when you do, you're going to be utterly destroyed. You're going to be driven out. You're going to be few in number. You're not going to be the great nation that God's been promising. He's going to take every bit of that away. And when that happens, though, here's this next matter of fact thing. Then you'll call on him. Do do you see, first of all, like you had access to him the whole time, but you've rejected him. And so if you reject him, he says, fine, you want to worship other gods? I'll let you worship other gods. And when you see just how bad that is, then what happens is when you call on him, when you seek him, him with all your heart and all your soul, you'll find him because God's not going to forget. This is what Moses is saying. God doesn't forget the promises that he made you. He's talking to Israel. Moses is talking to Israel and saying, God does not forget you, but I'm talking to you. That promise is for us as well. God is faithful. Have you heard that new song? I say new. It's like within the last year or two, you hear that song being sung from the rising sun to the setting same. I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness. Remember the old song? Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord God unto thee. God is faithful faithful. He remembers the promises he's made. And do you know what he's told you? He says that if you sin, if you will confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive all unrighteousness. That's what God has promised. You know what God promised right after that? He said that John was writing. He said, I write these things so that you don't sin. But if you do, John chapter two, verse one, go look it up for yourselves. If you want John two and verse one, I write these things so that you don't sin. But if you do, you have an advocate with the father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. You know what we read of Jesus in uh, the book of Hebrews? I'm getting ready to preach it. Uh, and, and well, after this video comes out, I've already preached it, but, but I'm getting ready where I'm at right now. I'm getting ready to preach this, that Jesus ever lives to make intercession for us. What a promise that we have. God will not forget that. So the real question is not, has God turned his back on you? Is God so angry with you that he just wants to cast you out into the pits of hell? No, God does not want to cast you out into the pits of hell. He sent his own son, Jesus, so that you don't have to go to hell. He is a merciful God. And if you will seek him with your whole heart, you'll find him. The prodigal son ran away from his father, squandered all of his money, lived a way that his father would have never approved. And yet when he was there in the pig pen getting ready to eat some slop, I'll never Never forget, I had a pastor one time who painted the picture that way. He got down on his hands and his knees and he said, just imagine that young man picking up that slop and getting ready to eat it. And he comes to himself and thinks, in my father's house, is there not plenty enough to eat? I would rather go back and be a servant. And so he prepares this speech. He's ready. He's got exactly what he's going to say to his father. He's going to tell his father all of these things. And when he's on the road, probably going over that speech and he gets back to his father, what does his father do? He sees him afar off and the father runs to him. Here is the kingdom of God. God loves you so much. If you will turn back to him, I don't know who I'm talking to right now. I am sitting in front of a camera all by myself, but you, you're watching this right where you are. If you've run away from God, you can come back to him. If you feel like your whole world has been upside down, you can come back to him, run to him, run to the father because he will run to you. That's what he's promised. He's merciful and he's good. And even not only will he run to you, but he'll even restore you. Would you like to be restored today? You can have a restored relationship with God and he'll restore you to that place with him, that place of blessing with him. And that happens through his son, Jesus. Would you confess your sin today to him? Will you trust that he will forgive you? I mean you, like actually you, he'll forgive you. Will you come unto him? I hope that you'll run back to the father today. You can do that through Jesus, his son. It's not about running to church, although that might be good. It's about running to the father. And you do that through faith in Jesus. Will you trust him that he'll be the good father that he promised he is? I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you'll run back to the father if you need it. And I hope you'll come back tomorrow as we get into more of Deuteronomy chapter four. I'll see you then.